There were a lot of people who got pets during the pandemic, but with a return to the office, we've begun to see a surge in pet surrenders. If you're a first-time pet owner, or a newcomer unsure about how to look after a pet or bylaws that may involve them, the Winnipeg Humane Society has everything you need to know to ensure all pets find their forever home. My name is Daphne He. I'm the Winnipeg Humane Society Adoption Manager. So I'm just here to uh, talk about what it takes to, you know, owning a pet, what kind of expectation um, is to, you know, have, and what bylaws might be uh, involving when owning a pet. So are you a pet owner yourself? Yes, I have six. Six pets? Yeah. <laughs> Busy household, two cats, two dogs, and two chinchillas. Oh, chinchillas. I've always seen them. Yeah. They're so cute. Yeah, they are super fluffy, but mine is really old now. They're like 13 years old. I didn't realize they lived that long. So a lot of people didn't expect because rabbit lives like maybe an average five, three to five years. But chinchillas in captivity can live up to 15 to 20 years. I guess to start with uh, some of the questions, uh, I'm going to go into the perspective of a first time pet owner. So yes. I'm looking to get a pet for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, how do I know what animal would be best for my life or what yeah. kind of pet should I get? Yeah, that's usually the first step when you think about owning a pet. So what we do here is if you come to our shelter and talk to our counselor, we usually will ask you like, um, where do you live? What is your life situation right now, right? A lot of time owning a pet really depends on your lifestyle and what's going on with your life. Uh, for example, if you live in a, a small apartment, uh, you need a quiet animal that is easy to take care of. You can think about a hamster, a rabbit, or even an adult cat. Um, but if you're a very active person, you like to go running, jogging, or even go hiking during winter time, maybe a young dog would be really good because they, they're energetic, they're fun, so you can have a good companion either way. If you're in an apartment and that noise is a problem, like maybe a fish or something different oh, yeah. would be yeah. a, a good choice. So it really depends on your on your situation. So it is our job here when you come to us, we will talk it out with you, help you decide what is the most important and also what kind of companion you're looking for, right? Even if you live in an apartment, doesn't mean that you cannot have a dog. Uh, but it depends on what type of dog then. If you have a husky, maybe that's not the best because they like to like howl all day. <laughs> but if you have a senior dog or a smaller breed, like a older chihuahua who just love to be with your companion, just love to cuddle and is fine being alone, then yeah, a chihuahua will work for an apartment too. So it really depends on your situation. I have an elderly chihuahua mix. And when we're home, it's pretty good, but... <laughs> <laughs> when we leave, that's it's like, all right, let's turn up the music so people can only <laughs> hear the <laughs> music. music. You know, some of the some yeah. of the tricks, and we have a young uh, boy cat right now, and I know they're just, very energetic. They're meow, like meow, beep, meow, beep, meow, beep. meow, runs on top of the covers. <laughs> brr, brr, brr. You definitely need to have the uh, right lifestyle to yes. look at young animals. And I guess that goes directly into the question, you know, what's better, a younger or older animal? There are benefits in adopting both young or older animal. When you, like, a lot of people want to adopt kitten and puppy because it's a great experience, right? You get to experience how you can raise a young animal, develop with them, bond with them, and grow with them. Um, and learn all the new things as they grow. So that usually is a very, very rewarding and satisfying journey for both the animals and the owner. Um, but, you know, adopting an adult or even a senior animal, the benefit is if you have a very specific personality and lifestyle you're looking for, then adult will be better because you get what you see. If you see a two-year-old who's very energetic, it's going to be energetic. Uh, but if it's a very laid back adult dog or senior dog, they're going to be lay, laid back. With puppies and kittens, it's just like children, um, their character is not completely formed yet. So it can turn out to be different than what you want. Um, so if you're ready for that, great. Uh, but if you have something very specific that you 
um, envision in your life what kind of companion you have. Maybe consider an adult or. When we got uh, Max, our kitten, the first night, so well behaved, so nice, <laughs> so polite. He'd you know just come up and ask for food and be like, "Yeah, oh, I, I'm sorry." The next day, switch changed. <laughs> Complete demon mode at that yeah. point, yelling, yeah. running around, feed me. <laughs> yeah, and for puppies, it's the same. They they basically have to learn everything from scratch, right? How to be in the home, how to go to the bathroom, how to eat, and there are people who need to wake up every four hours just to get the puppies to the bathroom. So you'll lose sleep. So if that's not what you want, then maybe puppy's not the best choice. A great benefit、um, of an older dog. They've、yeah. kind of controlled. They know where when to go. And if you've got a really smart dog, they'll actually let you know when they need to go out. Yeah, exactly. They just point at the door and then look at you, like point at the door, like, "Do you get it? Because I need to go now." <laughs> yeah. When someone is looking to get a pet for the first time, you know, there's a lot of avenues. They hear about breeders. They hear about pet stores and、uh, adoption. I guess what are What should people be thinking about when they're looking to get pets for the first time from maybe one of these avenues? There are definitely benefits from adopting either from shelter or from breeder. For pet store, Canada now has banned、uh, selling pet. Like if you're referring just cat and dog,、um, pet store doesn't sell any breeders cat and dog, but you can still get hamsters and stuff. For adoption, of course, first financially. It is a good start for any kind of families and individuals because the adoption fee is very affordable.、Um, we get all the vet check done for you, the vaccinations are done, and we gather information like medical history, behavior,、um, and personality traits. So we have counselor that can walk you through the animal that you're interested in to make sure, like you said, make an informed decision to help with it.、Um, For adopt for you know adopting from or purchasing a dog from breeder, the benefit is if you you need to be very careful.、Uh, buying from a breeder means that the the person needs to do a lot of research, making sure you are buying from an ethical breeder, and with an ethical breeder, they will, you know, they really care for their dog. They make sure their health is in like the peak of their life. And they are very, very particular in selecting the parents, the grandparents. So, if you are looking for a specific look and specific, you know, personality trait, energy level, finding a breeder can really help you achieve that.、Um, but in the end, you know, for for my point of view as a shelter manager、uh, in the adoption. There's just so many animals needing help. We have, even though our adoption has been going really well since we open up, and it has seen an increase, but the incoming animals just, just overwhelming. So we can't even keep up with the surrendering. So if you adopt from a shelter, not only first you you get you know financial support and you know adoption support and post adoption support, but You also help open up a space for the next animal to come in.、Um, also, you help an animal who was previously previously homeless now have a loving, safe home to be with, and enjoy a, a very comfortable long life. So, for me, I would always promote adoption and think that you know it's just there's so many benefits when you adopt from. Shelter, so yeah. Especially if someone is a first-time pet owner, like they're wanting to get a dog, you can go visit them. I I agree, adoption is incredibly important, and that's kind of like with myself. My dog is getting older. I'm starting to think about, you know, what's going to be the next step or the next dog. There is a ton and amazing benefits to、uh, adoption,、yeah. getting a dog, and then. But there's also a part of me that like, hmm, I want to get a very Specific dog, like I want、mm-hmm. to start training them in agility and things. I want to have, like, yeah, which can be a challenge, but like that's like the give and take. You know, finding a, a good breeder is、mm-hmm. so hard. Like the、It、demand is. is crazy right、mm-hmm. now. I'm trying to look standard poodles right、mm-hmm. now because I really love their look and、mm-hmm. I know they're a great show dog. Great dog, yeah.
Yeah, it's just there's so much misinformation online. It, it can be very, very difficult for um, a first time owner to really look for and a expensive. breeder. And expensive. Yeah, and they're very expensive. Well, I think um, poodles are going now for like minimum $3,000 for a puppy. Ooh, That's wow. like the low end. Adoption in the shelter, once in a while, we do get the breed come in. And definitely they're not going to be $3,000. <laughs> Yeah, so if you have the patience, um, you can, like, we have a wait list. So we have people who will call in and say, do you have a specific type? Let's say a standard poodle. We will say, okay, sorry, we don't have it now. But we'll add it to add you and your information to the wait list. So when we do have a standard poodle come in, you get the first step. We called you right away. And then we're like, do you want to come down and meet this awesome dog? And then it comes back down to the age of the animal. You're getting mm -hmm. a puppy. You're starting from scratch. You have to do all the training for yourself. Yeah. And, you know, for first-time pet owners... It can be overwhelming. Yeah. So overwhelming. There's a yeah. lot of mistakes I made um, 10 years ago raising my dog. There's a lot of mistakes I shouldn't have made that I've learned mm -hmm. from then. I yeah. love her dearly. But sometimes <laughs> you're like... Like, dude, listen. You're thinking about getting a pet... You're looking at your options, uh, adoption, uh, a breeder. You've made the research. You've taken the time. Now you got to get your home ready. What are some steps I can do to pet-proof my home? For if you're adopting puppy and kitten, the number one thing we would recommend, client, is definitely tuck away your cables. You know, fragile things. Put it where they cannot reach, and also house plants. Definitely house plan. If you have any house plan that is on the ground or within reach, put them away first. For cable, obviously, you know, biting them and chewing on them is very dangerous for the kitten and puppy. Um, and then as house plan, very often a lot of the house plan we have at home are toxic to the pets. So it, really, we need to uh, make sure they uh, we put them away. But in general, I think it's, the pet proof is, yes, put things, the dangerous things away, but also rearrange your home setting if needed. Um, it, you know, creating a space where your dog or your cat will feel comfortable with, um, like a safe room or safe corners where you can put their bed, uh, food and water. If you have multiple animals at home, how can you arrange your home to make sure each animal can feel belong in their own area without feeling that, you know, we need to have conflict or fight for resource or anything. Tuck away your cable, put things away, and then rearrange your home to see how you can welcome this new family member. I've been fortunate enough that I've never had a pet that chews on electrical cables. I've yeah. seen, you know, the vet emergencies of a pet going through. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's better to be safe than sorry. And the whole plant thing, yeah, I had a couple plants. We got a cat and we're like, oh, no. Now we got to... <laughs> Got to get rid of yeah. them. We can't just, you know, when you have a small dog or something, you can put plants on counters or cupboards and they're not going to get to it. But yeah, replacing yeah. it. And you can find plants because uh, we have some succulent. Well, we had some <laughs> succulents. Um, but, you know, finding plants that they like, like cat grass is a great yes. option. They love to chew on that. Exactly. Um, and just be prepared that if you do have a plant and pets, that mm -hmm. it, the plant might not last. <laughs> no. And yeah, like you said, it, basically you're touching base on exactly like the idea of when you are welcoming a new pet, the expectation is your life will change. Right. If you expect your life to be exactly the same, don't change anything. Sometimes it can be hard when you welcome a new family, like a new pet into the home. Like if you refuse to move your plant and then they bite it, you know, you can't really blame the cat for that. So um, that's part of the things we always talk to our clients to like expect your lives to be disrupted, to change. And then both over time, you will adjust to uh, a situation where everything become balanced again, then you'll be at ease. They're, like, it, chil it, they're like children. Exactly. Things are going to break. Things yes. are going to get wrecked. But you yeah. just got to... 
be okay with that. Yeah, like, pillow's it's, gonna explode. It's okay, buy a new pillow. <laughs> it, it happens. You, you it gotta happens. be prepared. Because they fill your life with so much love. The love and joy that you experience from having a pet sometimes really outweighs the damage that you might see. You know, a little plant dying or pillow exploding. Um, but, you know, all the companionship, the love, emotional support you can get from an animal is incredible. What kind of things should people be expecting? You know, how often should they be bringing them to the vets and especially if you have an animal with health needs mm -hmm. it can get incredibly costly you know yeah. are there ways to kind of offset these uh costs at all yeah like if you have a healthy animal we we do usually recommend maybe visit your vet maybe once a year just to have the physical exam and then based on your vet's recommendation to decide whether the vaccinations or deworming requires update but if you have a sick animal or before they get sick if you want to have some plan to help with the cost down the line pet insurance sometimes is a good option there are many company uh, in canada that offer really great products and great package um, they really look at you know individual cases uh, you have this cat uh, or you have to start what age, what kind of health, or what kind of situation, they will recommend different package for you. And then they will give you the detail of what would be included or what not be included. So like w when I work at, uh, like a few years back before I come to Winnipeg Humane Society, I work at um, an animal hospital. And I have witnessed how having pet insurance really help owners um, because sometimes unexpected things can happen when your cat or your pet's getting old. Um, yes, yeah, sometimes unexpected illness um, and costs will occur. But a lot of time, those owners who have insurance, um, they will have no obstacle into helping their animal. They know right away, okay, that's fine. I have insurance. Let me contact them. Okay, everything's good. Let's get the treatment done. So, you know, they, 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 they don't have to hesitate or struggle like, oh, can I even help my animal? So if you have this, um, uh, if you want to plan ahead with this, then yeah, insurance is something you can definitely consider. It's something that I've been uh, considering myself mm -hmm. since my dog has issues. I, I would also recommend for people, if you have a dog or a cat or any animal really that has teeth, get them <laughs> used to brushing their teeth. Oh, like, yes. brush their teeth all the time because, yeah. you know, 10 years down the line, all of a sudden the vet is going to tell you, hey, your dog needs to have their teeth cleaned. Otherwise, they're yeah. going to have some problems. And you're like, well, how much is that going to cost me? And you're looking yeah. at somewhere between 350 to like 600 plus dollars. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, it's not cheap sometimes with vet care, especially with uh, the increased life expenses right now. We do see an increase in vet care as well. And the worst thing you can experience as a pet owner is to realize that your pet is sick and you cannot help them. That's the worst. No one should ever go through that. So, yeah, plan ahead. And if you like anyone who wants to know more can always call the Humane Society um, to get more information because we have people here is aware and have all the information. For newcomers, they're coming to Canada. They're, they're settling here in Winnipeg. They're thinking about getting a, a pet what are some of the laws or regulations that are in place that they should be aware of before they dive into what it is to be a pet owner? If you live within the city limit, yes, there are multiple, like quite a few bylaw that owner needs to be aware of. For example, licensing. You have to license all the cats and dogs. And I might personally, because um, I... I'm Chinese and I help the Chinese community here in Winnipeg. A lot of time they didn't know that the animal needs to be licensed. They were like, what is that? So licensing is definitely a must for dogs and cats. Um, and, you know, uh, if you're a dog owner, uh, make sure your dog is always on leash. You can only let your dog off leash um, outside of your property in a designated area, but you cannot just go around and then just let your dog on loose on other people's property. That is not acceptable uh, according to the bylaw. Um, also, cat as well need to stay within your property. Um, 
bylaw is stating that you know all cats need to be staying within the 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 property line within your property line and should not be roaming around the neighborhood. There are license that is for uh, I think the new bylaw that now come out back in like July first have talked about different types of licensing as well. So whether your animal is uh, spay and neuter or not, uh, there's different license for that. Um, if it's for breeder, there's different license. If it's an adopted animal, there's different license. So I would encourage everyone to go on the animal services website because it's a it's a long document, but it's very easy to understand. So if you want to know more, I would encourage to go to their website. They have a link that you can just click in and, and you'll see everything that's listed in there. There's a lot when becoming a uh a pet owner especially within the city and this doesn't just apply to, to newcomers with the, the rules of like you know having a pet wander uh, around that that's yeah. something that a lot of um uh, rural areas deal with um stray dogs yeah. stray cats people just letting their dogs and cats run around and that's where yeah. we fall into some problems with cat populations. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, that the cat overpopulation is definitely a huge problem. And, and I don't know if Canada, but for Winnipeg, for sure, Manitoba, um, we, we do have, we do see a lot of incoming stray animals. And a lot of time they don't have license. They don't have tattoo. They're not spay or neuter. And, you know, we have this thing called a kitten season. So basically, <sighs> Uh, starting March, April, there's just going to be an explosion of babies coming. Um, and it can become very hard because when you're a stray cat and a baby born in the street, that is is a rough start. And it poses a risk uh, not only to the animals themselves, but to wildlife. Um, yeah. There's a lot of data about the destructive effects that loose cats can have on populations. Yes. Depending on you are, it can be like, Lizards, birds, uh, uh, rodents, uh, systems completely wiped exactly. out by cats because they are yeah. they are potent predators. Yeah, that is very true. Cats are incredibly successful predator when they're in the wild. They, especially cats, are really good in problem solving. So they will work really hard to make sure they catch whatever they want. So yes, it, we did have studies shows that stray cat has posed a, a threat to the wildlife. Um, so yeah, keeping cat, keeping your cat indoor definitely has it is very important. And then that comes back into the importance of spay and neutering your animals. Yes. If you're not going to be a breeder, mm -hmm. spay your animal. Like yes. just just do it. Um, if yeah. you're adopting, it's already been done for you. Yes. Exactly. And you don't have to worry about the vet fee for spaying and neuter as well. It can be very expensive if you go by yourself to a private vet. Um, it can range between 400 to to $1,000, depending mm -hmm. what pet you have. But Just yeah, went here, through that if you... a couple months ago. <laughs> yeah. So if you adopt from a shelter or rescue, any kind of shelter and rescue will have them fixed for you. And you don't have to worry about that anymore. We want to care for these animals, but we also want to be aware of our environment around us. Stray dogs can become a nuisance, and unfortunately, sometimes they get put down, and we don't want to see that. We, yeah. we don't want to see animals. And by spaying and neutering, you help reduce the intake at adoption centers. Exactly, yeah. Reducing the incoming can definitely help. I think everyone works in the shelter. Ultimately, our goal is hoping in the future one day we'll be out of jobs. We don't want to see animal coming into the shelter. So spay and neuter is very important. And there are places where you can, uh, you know, talk to the vet to see, hey, is there anything I can help to maybe, you know, do installment financial plan for the spay and neuter? Or you can reach out to a different rescue, a different shelter who might have program in place that can offer low cost spay and neuter. So, like, for example, Humane Society, definitely, we, we have a program to help um, families um, to support their animal with lower costs, getting them spay and neuter as well. So, there are a lot of resources available in Winnipeg. So, for newcomer, don't be afraid. Reach out, and then we will try to give you as many resources as we can. They're free. 
and it'll uh, save you a hassle. Like if you have a female cat, all of a sudden she comes back and has a bunch of kittens. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, it's not easy to care for kittens <laughs> though. And then you have like six of them. You're like, what am I gonna do with them? If someone is can't care for their animal anymore, mm-hmm. regard sometimes situations happen. You mm-hmm. you lose a job or you've been yeah. looking for an apartment and you can't find a pet friendly one and there, there's no options anywhere. Well, what what should someone do? Yeah, I mean, there are many resources. Um, the rendering is always the last resource we recommend. Um, you, I know there's a Facebook group that you can l- reach out. They will help you find rehoming to a new family. Um, there are, for example, we have urgent care, primary care, low cost vet care that can help if you need help for any medical concern. Um, if we have food bank to help people who might have expenses, a challenge to feed their animals. Um, even behavior class. Sometimes we offer free behavior class for people who are facing challenge at home in managing their animals. So we have all this resource designed to help you keep your animal. And surrendering, uh, you we would really highly recommend to be your last resource. Not only this is hard for the owner itself that have to give up their animal, and well, an animal ended up in the shelter. So um, there are many, many resources to explore. So start with those, and then consider surrendering as the last. As a last resort. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking this time to chat with me. Hopefully, you know. When someone hears this and they're thinking about getting a pet for this for the for the first time, mm-hmm. they'll now have some information and maybe they'll be inspired to, oh, yeah, maybe I should reach out to find out more information. Yeah. So yeah. W- where can they go to contact the Winnipeg yeah. Humane Society? Like our phone number is 204-982-2035 for our front desk. Uh, if you need any help, we can provide you information, transfer you to the right department uh, for all the information you need. Or our shelter is open for the public. You can walk in anytime Monday to Sunday. We're open and we'll always have people at the front desk ready to help you. Have any stories you'd like us to share or communities we should highlight? Leave a comment on our social media or reach out to us on our website. I'm Ryan Funk. This was you talk and have yourself a good one.